Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Unis Mala Show Welcome to the Eunice Malas Show. I am your host, Eunice Malas. This past year, I had the chance to visit my home country of South Sudan. While there, I attended one of the festivals that is held on a monthly basis called Made in South Sudan. It was founded by a young lady by the name of Akuja Mading Degarang. She's going to talk to us and also show us some of the artwork and crafts that are by South Sudanese and created by South Sudanese. So we know that South Sudan, we had been in conflict for over 40 years with the country of Sudan. And during that time, we didn't have the privilege of showcasing our art, of using our art because we had to flee due to the conflict. But now that we have uh, some form of peace within our country, we're now able to uh, showcase our art and also sell our art. So Akuja Mading Degarang and other artists, including uh, Rasta Kenyi Ladu and Nyagwa Nyon, are going to show us some of the arts and crafts from South Sudan. Akuja Mading Degarang. Um, I'm the founder and organizer of uh, this event, uh, Made in South Sudan, a uh, market for arts, crafts, and fashion. Um, we hold this event every uh, first weekend of the month, um, and its objective is to promote South Sudanese um, artisans, fashion designers, uh, craftspeople, uh, painters as well. Um, the idea originally came basically from my desire and interest in promoting a positive side to South Sudan, uh, to also preserve our, our culture in terms of the traditional crafts, uh, to pass on of course that to the next generation, uh, but most importantly for the people who are doing or uh, making these items to offer them an opportunity um, uh, to sell uh, what they honestly and skillfully make and earn a decent living. So um, I enjoy this very much. Um, we've been doing this now for a couple of years. Initially we started in 2012. Um, we had pop-up in different places, pop-up markets in different places, but uh, recently, last year, we decided to kind of be a bit more settled and fixed. So we are holding it here at the moment at Da Vinci, which is a lovely spot uh, on the Nile, on the River Nile. Um, the event is basically usually quite well attended. A lot of people enjoy it and appreciate it. Um, a lot of people, particularly South Sudanese, do appreciate the fact that uh, people have been away for so long uh, in a sense that they have not seen uh, some of these traditional items for many, many years and they come here and see it being displayed, it always brings a smile uh, to a lot of people's faces. So generally, uh, the response has been positive. In addition, also, of course, for the people who don't know South Sudan and only, only maybe know the negative stuff about South Sudan, uh, are also surprised that, wow, there's, there's talent here, uh, there's prospect, there's people who can do other stuff than, than, than be uh, soldiers or politicians. Of course, we need those, but there's a diversity in our culture that we need to appreciate. Again, also people come here from different parts of South Sudan. Um, so someone, for, for example, who's coming all the way from a wheel, uh, finds something that relates to his or her background or something that they've seen in their culture. Uh, but then, of course, maybe if it belongs to someone else from another part of the country as well, uh, that they're surprised, like, wow, I did not know that people from uh, 
Unity State or from Upper Nile also have the same, you know, traditional items. And that kind of brings a sense of, yes, we are different people, but there's certain things that we share. Uh, and again, that brings a, a big smile to my face and to a lot of people's faces, and they start having a discussion about it. That we actually, you know what, we don't really know each other. So it might be a, an opportunity also to create that kind of sense of kind of, uh, yes, we are unique, but we, we, you know, our uniqueness or our diversity does not have to create conflict. Uh, and then we can learn from each other. So yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's yeah, it's an interesting uh, setting for me. I enjoy organizing it. Um, we are not making any profit from this. Everyone comes with their stuff, displays, enjoy their weekend and goes home happy with whatever they made. For us, it's just a sense of like really, you know, showcasing, actually showing off, I should say, our culture that really kind of uh, makes me happy and enjoy this, um, uh, this, this event. Um, this event is also linked to uh, an annual event that we organize. It's called the Festival of Fashion uh, for Peace, uh, Fashion and Arts for Peace. So every August we hold a whole weekend event where we try similar but on an extended kind of uh, level and we try and bring in more people who are not necessarily based in Juba to take part. So we fly them in with the support from other partners and donors and, and yeah, basically have a, a festival music, uh, arts, crafts, um, and also we hold a fashion show uh, on one of the evenings. So that's the background of this. It's usually worn by men uh, from the Lotuko people in Eastern Equatoria. Um, it's, it's quite a heavy one. It's only worn on special occasions. Um, this is what is it's called par uh, in Shiluk language from Upper Nile. Uh, so basically these are made out of reeds from the Nile and they're traditionally used to cover food to protect food from flies and other, you know, um, uh, yeah, other bits of flying things. Uh, so it's called par. I mean, at the moment, I think uh, one of the ways of uh, using it in a modern setting is to use it as a placemat. So that's how I use it at home at the moment. Uh, but this is something traditional for many, many years that we, uh, uh, we, the people of uh, Upper Nile, have used for many, many years. Um, here you've got a number of uh, pipes. Um, majority here, or some of them here, are more for decoration, basically. It's a creative guy from Yeru uh, in Lake State who makes them. So he uses different kinds of material, of course, metal and wood. But the brass-looking uh, material here is mainly a recycled uh, ammunition uh, metal. So particularly the, the, the shell, the cover, the bullet shells. And he melts those down and just creates all these different figures from wood. Um, as you can see, these are not likely to be used for like regular smoking, uh, but more for decoration. But here you have smaller ones that are possibly uh, used for kind of a more standard smoking uh, uh, size. Uh, so that's from all from the same guy. Um, these baskets here, is from Western Equatoria, uh, Yambio, and uh, these are traditionally made to dry cassava. Um, this is very kind of see-throughy, very airy. Um, and uh, the story behind this is uh, a woman approached me a couple of years ago, trying to find just a few pounds to buy some food for her children, and she was only um, selling it for one dollar. So I looked at this equivalent of one dollar, about five. Uh, uh, South Sudanese pounds uh, just to buy a meal for her children and when I looked at this and I look back at the kind of things that you see in places like Ikea for example this will cost like a hundred times what she's selling it for so I committed myself and said to her look if you produce more of these I'll make sure yeah I sell them for you for three times what you're asking for right now 
and that's how our relationship started. So we are still friends now and she regularly sends a supply whenever she can. Um, these are generally common among pastoralists. Um, so it's a headdress, but also uh, a, a, a stool. So generally when pastoralists are moving around uh, different areas with their cattle, you know, you know, of course they need to sit down and rest, but also they could possibly want to lie down. So it works for both. So, um, so this particular one is uh, actually, again, from Lake State, from, uh, from the Atwat people. But you can see this in different places among the Nuer, the Dinka, uh, the Taposa uh, in eastern Equatoria, uh, who are generally on the Mundari as well. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is just one, uh, one of a kind and it's made in the shape of a, a tortoise, as you can see. So people are very creative as to what maybe their favorite animal is and they create it as such. So yeah, you can see there's different sort of types. You know, some are new, some are old. Um, as you can see, this is an old one, so it's quite expensive. Um, but uh, some of these kind of lighter colored ones are new. This is the prize. Uh, this is a, a bell that they use to lead the dowry to the new bride's place. So it's a huge clangy bell. I could try and shake it, it's quite heavy. As you can see, it makes a really loud noise. So this announces the delivery of the dowry to the family uh, whose daughter is being married. And usually it needs to be a really big ball that's carrying it because I don't know, I think this is at least 15 kg, uh, the weight. And uh, that's basically not cheap. Apparently, according to the, the person who brought this, it costs about seven bulls. And imagine one bull is $500 equivalent. Yeah, so that's how expensive this is. Um, and it's very priced. If you have something like this, then clearly you're a rich man. If you can afford to, to buy and deliver a bell of this type. Um, one of the other really interesting stuff that always people ask what it is, it's um, a shield that's traditionally used for, well, basically fighting, although I'm not uh, condoning fighting, but that's a traditional shield. Again, this is from uh, the people of uh, Lake State. And uh, in different parts of South Sudan, you can find similar shields uh, made out of different materials. This is ma basically made out of a trunk of a tree uh, and covered with uh, cowhide leather. So that's what that is. And here you have what they call the ben, the ben sticks or some of the walking sticks. So these are usually carried by the big men who are basically out there. Uh, there's different kind of versions of that. There's bigger, there's bigger ones like this and the smaller ones and different sorts of material basically. Um, uh, you know, different kind of wood. You have mahogany, you have ebony, uh, you have different kind of shapes or designs to it. It's the face of a man. So yeah, so there's um, quite an interesting variety here. So that's uh, what this all is. All made in South Sudan, purely South Sudan. Thank you. Let us take a short music break. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys one of my favorite African Sukus dancers. Her name is Chantel. She used to dance for a famous African artist named Kanda Bongo Man. So here we go with Chantel. Chantel
Let us now return back to the art and craft exhibit of uh, Made in South Sudan. My background, okay, well, um, South Sudanese um, and um, like many other South Sudanese, uh, during the war, when the war started in the early 80s, we were displaced. Um, uh, my, my family and uh, siblings and I were displaced to Khartoum initially. Um, clearly things in Khartoum did not work as well as we would have liked it. So we were then forced to move to Egypt and then from Egypt eventually we ended up in the UK where I completed my studies. I did uh, a BA in African Studies at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London. And the um, reason for that clearly goes back to my, my, my childhood. In a sense, my interest in South Sudanese culture comes from my family who always, because we were born, basically, I was born in Juba. And then we left, I left very young. And I think, uh, of course, my, my, my family had a uh, interest to, to kind of to, to, to continue our culture, to tell us about what it is that we left behind. So I constantly heard stories, um, you know, real stories of what happened to people, stories about experiences of my cousins and, and mother, about going to dances, you know, folk tales about explaining the origin of the people, where we came from. So things like that, and that's what basically started the fire in me. And I, I just thought to myself, like, you know what? One day I would love to also con continue to share these stories with my children. So that's where the interest came that I would like to contribute to preserving that culture in any, you know, way or form. So then, with my degree, uh, a lot of what I basically did research on had had to do with South Sudan one way or the other. Uh, kind of with the plan that I would like to continue and do a PhD on an aspect of South Sudanese culture. Uh, hence, basically, uh, me trying to find ways to come back to do a PhD. At the time, it was uh, still uh, before the CPA days. So there was no way that I could travel freely uh, purely to do research. So the option was to find a job with an, a UN or an NGO who were working at the time, of course, this uh, was clearly during the war, so there's only a few areas I can actually go to. So I was based in Rumbek for two years, working for UNICEF. Um, uh, at the same time, of course, while working for UNICEF, doing some work with youth on HIV AIDS and protection, uh, on the side I also was collecting information about the culture uh, and the tradition of people of Rumbek, you know, uh, what they do, you know, what are their material culture, you know, in terms of the oral culture as well, and that way, continuing to do what really where my heart is and eventually of course I traveled to other parts of South Sudan and did the same thing so whenever I, I went on like a formal official visit I always make sure I I nip by the market and see who are there what, what are they doing what are they selling you know and so that's how I started building the network and that's that's my background Thanks once again. My name is uh, Rasta Kenyi Ladu. I'm from Central Equatoria here, South Sudan, a beloved country. And uh, we are here to, today to display uh, South Sudan artifacts that are made from South Sudan, proud to be South Sudanese. And uh, we are by the River Nile, the river bank of beautiful River Nile. So today we are here to display good, good products that we are making out of the center. For example, here we are having some metallic bangles, we have uh, key holders, we have chains, we have, we have capes which are made from uh, banana fiber. So we mostly try to use natural materials 
that we get around. We gather all these natural materials that we gather around. We use also calabashes, you know, for taking water and we use it again to display on the on the on the walls, you know, having good good messages. So we also got some sculptures for our beloved people here. And uh, we also got some porches, some holders there. So this art is very, very essential for this developing country so that people will stop war. This is what we can create out of this place. And like, it's so, so beautiful where people come and see what we have, what we are enriched with. And so it's a creativity that we try to bring it out to our people and to the whole world to see how this country is beautiful with things and everything that is in it. So I am so grateful and so happy being here, being around here and doing this kind of work that are really very helpful. And some of the products are made by youths who come to the center. Some are from women and disabled who are there. So we try to work with them positively in order to move forward. So we are not only involved in war, we have got a lot of things that we can display and show people, showcase people. So also we use natural materials to make most of these things. We support natural materials whereby we don't want nylon pollution in our nation. So we want a place to be clean, to be beautiful. So. These are some of the products that are on the display. We have also different, different uh, tables with different artists, but all is in one. And I hope that like, people are happy and they'll be happy to see what we're doing around uh, here in Juba, South Sudan. So even those people who are in diaspora, when they can come back, they will get us like we are moving on with this kind of thing. So I'm so grateful I'm, I'm so happy. Also there on the, on, the, on the tree, we have some locally done bags from Vitenge. You know? so we weave bags, natural bags. Yeah. So these are just some of the few things we have. Also we got photos explaining South Sudan. You know, different photos. This is like, for example, this is Juba in 1972. Yeah. So we got also some of pictures of our, 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 our warriors, even women who have fought and liberated for this nation. Also, not forgetting uh, the environment, we have animals that are uh, elephants that are found in, uh, in, our, in our parks, Nimule Park. You know, different good, good, good stuff that we have around. So I'm going to give thanks and uh, glory for me being here and for everything and for the good works that we have been moving forward with. So I appreciate love for all this. So I give thanks. Yeah. So um, this is House of Vine. It was founded in 2012. Um, we do mostly everything from pencil skirts, I love pencil skirt because of the classicness of it. Uh, you can never go wrong with the pencil skirt. We do um, men's shirts, which is very, very nice. It's African print. Uh, most of my materials, they do come from Ghana, Nigeria, and also in Kenya. So I do get, we don't have a lot of fabric in South Sudan, so we do have to go outsource it outside and buy it from outside. So that's the, one of the challenges. Um, the reason why for House of Banjo is because of, we just need something made in South Sudan, something just coming from home. And also it's so hard to find clothes that actually fit because of our long legs, long arms. So when I started the House of Banjo, it's mainly for South Sudanese that feel like a brand name from South Sudan. And also um, House of Banjo, it's mean anybody is a VIP, like the Banjo means Banjo, like something big. So that's how we came up with the House of Bunny. I mean, any client is a, is a VIP. And also with the House of Bunny, what you do, you, we found the foundation. So all the money goes to the William Young Bunny Foundation. Yeah. Um, the foundation runs um, just to keep William Young Bunny the vision alive, like keeping the schools, um, 
Last year we were busy with mostly humanitarian, uh, donating mosquito nets, medicines, used clothes, uh, baby clothes. So we've been busy last year just on humanitarian access. This year we want to focus on schools, like sponsoring more kids to go to school, that they can afford to go to school. So that's what we are doing. Um, every month we do this fashion show in Juba at the Da Vinci. So this gives us a chance for South Sudanese to come out and actually buy product that made by South Sudanese. So that's very exciting. Um, so we have, uh, with my design, it's not only like African print, so you could have like a jersey, but we call this like Africanize it a little bit. So if you have a jersey dress, here it's a, instead of the boring jersey dress, this have like some African print going to it. Um, you could also wear like what I'm wearing, so maybe just a top, and also with a, with just like a different skirt. <laughs> and then, um, oh, even this one. Like, it could be a regular boring linen, but now you Africanize it a little bit. So everything has an African touch. So, so you can wear it wherever you are and, and support South Sudan with you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on tonight's program. Join us next week, same time, same place, here on the Eunice Mala Show. If you believe, you can achieve.